So years ago, when I got my first Snyder rifle, it was a Nepalese copy, I suppose you could call it, I was under the impression that I would be able to use these. Now these are 24 gauge shot shell holes. Two and a half inch. And what a lot of folks were doing, this is probably 10 years ago or so, is they were cutting these down to two inch using 50 or 60 grains of powder, and then using a 60 caliber round ball. And a lot of folks were doing that and it was working really well for him. In fact, Mike Bellevue, I remember said that that was the most accurate Snyder load that he had ever tried, it was just a plastic shot shell hole and a round ball. And so when I got my Nepalese Snyder, that's what I intended to do. I really wasn't planning on having to make and deal with these as cool as they are. So, I got my Snyder, I got the 24 gauge shot shells, and these things were easy and cheap to obtain then. I reckon they're probably not now. And I did all that, I cut them down, I charged them up, and the issue that I had, this is my British made one, was I, they would chamber up just fine, and I would fire them, boom, and it would go off. But when I tried to extract them, they would be stuck. And I would, I'd be moving this, and pretty soon I'm doing the judo chop thing on it. And it would bend the rim, the little flimsy rim on these thin brass deals there. And then it'd be stuck in there. And so what I would have to do is take my ramrod and then thump it out that way. And I don't think I had one round that didn't go like that in that other Snyder. And it was always disappointing. And I think it's probably just as simple as the tolerances that the Nepalese folks used when they made those were not the same as when the British made these. And so I ended up going down the route of making brass, and the brass cartridges worked fine in that. I didn't have any extraction issues with those, but I did notice that they were really wide. After they were fire-formed, they were, they were definitely, uh, well, different. So I wanted to give this a try once I got my British Snyder, and... Right off the bat, I was already having a little trouble. Now, one of the things that I noticed was when I took this and cut it down and charged it up with 50 grains and put a ball in it, I couldn't chamber it. I would go to chamber it, and it would go about, eh, I don't know, maybe three quarters of the way, and then wouldn't go any farther. And so I thought, you know, I'm just destined to have to use brass shells in these. These things just don't work for me. But what I ended up doing was cutting these down to inch and a half and running a lighter charge of 35 grains, basically making a shorter cartridge and using a round ball. And then after that, they chambered just fine, no trouble at all. Now, as far as the brass cartridges are concerned, I use these flat base 60 caliber conical projectiles made from an X-Ring Services mold. And these have performed excellent in my brass cartridges and i thought you know well maybe i could use it in one of these just the same but again with the two inch long cartridge i couldn't chamber it it probably has something to do with the thickness of the plastic it's probably all it is but i found just making a shorter cartridge because the cartridge does taper towards the top uh, but i found just making a shorter cartridge overall seems to work just fine but I did assemble one of these holes with that 60 caliber conical just to see if it would work. <clears throat> so let me show you how I assembled the round balls. So here's our two and a half inch, 24 gauge plastic shot shell hole. And the way I do this, as cheesy as it is, it is functional. I take my micrometer and I set it to 1.5 and I just run it around the plastic and it scribes a line mostly straight. 
Next, I take my loading bench utility knife and I just start cutting it down. Now, I'm sure that someone's going to be upset about this because, trust me, I know it looks really cheesy. Well, that's because it is. But the cool thing about this particular deal is it doesn't have to be cut off perfectly straight. You're not crimping anything, so it really doesn't matter. It's purely aesthetic. So after we have our cartridge cut off, we're going to charge it. Now I'm using a 2.2 cc dipper and this happens to be 3F Swiss. Now the 2.2 cc dipper throws a 35 grain charge and I always check just to make sure if I remember right it was 34.5 or something. Either way, close enough for me. So 35 grains worth of 3F Swiss and next is the 60 caliber round ball. Now you just push that in and I happen to use this uh, fancy seating tool. And if yours happens to be a quarter inch drive extension, that's also fine. And then the last step is to lube it up. And you don't need to pack the thing solid. You just need to get a little bit in there around the edges. Now that happened to be SPG lube, which I haven't used in a long, long time, but I did start using it on some 4440 bullets the other day and it worked pretty well. So I'm probably gonna run that for a while. Uh, not that I'm unhappy with my stuff, but it works pretty well. Mm -hmm. We have one of these loaded like this. The rest all have round balls. This actually has a 60 caliber conical bullet in it, but it doesn't chamber nice. Mm -hmm. I have to like push it in there. Smack the hell out of that. So these are 35 grains of 3F with a round ball. High? Low left. Low? Yeah. What? All over the place. Yeah. Low. Okay. All over Helen Creation. Okay. Oh, wait, wait. You're shooting at the box. Shooting at the box. I'm sorry, you're right in line and you're up top. Okay, so it's high. Yeah, I thought you were going, I thought you no, were no, going that, for the no, disc. That, that's fine, that's fine. I thought you were going for the disc. That's okay. That's okay. Now that we're all on the same page. <laughs> yeah, you were in line, but high. There we go. Pretty good with that thing. Even the round balls. Yeah. That looked like it was just to the right. I assume when you were going for the disc. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe a little high, actually. Yeah, they're definitely, definitely shooting high, okay. which is not hey, that, uncommon. That's better than. There we go. Much better. Oh, we leave that shit in. In. Hey, what's, what's, what's your deal there, Mr. Firing Pen? Maybe to use your period correct uh, pocket knife extractor tool. Period correct Kershaw. Oh, mini fence pliers. No, this is a. Uh, Oh, is that the bench made? No, this is a cold steel that Lenny gave me for Christmas. Mm. Instead of sharpening my knives, I just buy a new one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Hey, I, I think I found a load that doesn't suck. 
<laughs> well, maybe. It potentially doesn't suck. Just, it, nah, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> never mind, it sucks. Yeah, this is a problem that I've noticed with the shotgun shells. They expand. Is uh, sometimes you get one that doesn't want to come out. Just one? One ain't that. Could be a lot worse. Let's uh, let's try it out there, Derek. All right. I still got a couple of shots. Oh, just to the left. You looked like you were in line, but left. Okay. Last try. Better make it a good one. Yep. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'll take it. So as you can see, that worked out just like I had hoped, like I had originally hoped when I bought my first Snyder back 10 years ago. Now, something I should mention about these shot shell holes, here some of them are along with some 12 gauge, is that these are completely reloadable. A lot of people, for whatever reason, think that they're not. They think that you have one shot and that's it. Sometimes when it comes to plastic holes and black powder, when you have a hefty charge of powder, sometimes it can melt the plastic and it'll it'll weaken it. Sometimes it'll even burn a hole in it. But with a light charge like these, that's not something you have to worry about. What I do with these, and I, all my other plastic black powder shot shells, is when I get them home, I wash them in hot soapy water, and I take a brush and I brush them in and out of there and then I set them out in the sun to dry and after they're dry I pop the primers out, resize them if necessary, which I won't have to for these, reprime them and load them again. Pretty simple. Now as cool as the brass 577 Snyder round is and, and it is, you can't deny and I'm sure to my some of my YouTube contemporaries, this probably sounds horrible and cringy, but you can't deny that the plastic shot shells is the most economical, easiest way to get your old Snyder rifle up and running. When I bought those, which was probably 10 years ago, I think they were $9.99 for $100. And, and I know they are because it says so in the receipt in the bag that I pulled that out of. 24 gauge shot shell holes nowadays are probably as hard to find as just about everything else. But Ballistic Products does have them and you are able to back order them. At least that's what it looked like to me. And I think they were $22.99 when I last looked. That still, for $100, is a really good deal because again, they are reloadable. It's not like you get one shot and that's it. As far as the accuracy and velocity, I didn't even try the chronograph. It was cloudy that day. And for whatever reason, my chronograph just really struggles to read unless it is in direct sunlight. If a cloud passes over the sun for three seconds while that projectile goes through there, it won't read. If I had to take a guess, it's probably in the maybe eight, nine hundreds, something like that, if I had to take a guess. Uh, but either way, who cares? It shoots pretty darn well. One of the cool things about the lighter load with the round ball is I don't have to aim two feet under the target at 60 yards. In fact, I was pretty much holding right on the target at 180 yards, uh, which I hit on the last one there, which I was happy to see. A couple other things that, uh, that happened in that video you might have noticed is I was tapping on my firing pin. I had to take my pocket knife and tap on my firing pin because it was actually stuck down. 
and when it's stuck down, you can't open the breech. So I just had to tap on it and it came back and I have since taken it all apart and cleaned it and that was all that was going on with that. Um, I did have one brass shot shell you might have noticed that wouldn't extract and rather than hammering it and bending the rim, I took my pocket knife out and just fished it out like that and that worked fine. So I think if you are going to use the plastic shot shells, there are going to be some things like that that you just might have to live with. But one out of 15 is much better than every time because that's what happened with my Nepalese Snyder when I tried these. It did it every time. So that's much better. And I didn't have to use my... It, well, it's a cleaning rod. Did I call it a ramrod last time? I bet I did. It's a cleaning rod, technically, even though... You know what I mean. I didn't have to use my cleaning rod as a ramrod to get my spent shell out of there. Does that sum it up? I think that about sums it up. So, as usual, folks, if you thought this video didn't suck, do me a favor and hit the like button. Consider subscribing. And if you did think it sucked, go make your own damn video.